if you just recently picked up a new iPad or you're just exploring and see what are some really good apps to download on your device, well, you came to the right video. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you my top 10 apps I use day to day all the time on my iPad. This iPad in particular happens to be the M1 equipped iPad Pro, but these applications don't really require that much power, so they should be compatible on any iPad as long as it's on the latest version of iPad OS. So with that said, sit back and let's go ahead and get started. So one of the big key advantages of having a tablet like this, especially when you combo it with the Apple Pencil, is taking notes on demand. Definitely it's a lot more convenient than traveling with a big notebook and having to go page to page to look for that one written note that you have. So the application that I substitute this old method, it's called GoodNotes. And this is the app that I've been using every single time. Even though I tried replacing it with another third party one, I keep coming back to it. I don't know why, maybe because of my past history, but the fact that it still works and gets the job done and has everything that you will ever need in one single application, it's worth it and there's no ads as there is a one-time purchase you have to do but everything is just so well organized and you customize everything if you notice i have a bunch of different notebooks yeah sometimes i just write random things and just put something temporary but when you create a new notebook you can change the cover art you can even draw on it just like a real notebook and then when you tap on it it'll just simply load up just like so and you create several different pages you have all the essential tools that you need like highlighters you have quick shortcuts to shape you can add text if you needed you can change the color of the pen and when you export it, you can export it in multiple different file sources as well you can see quick thumbnails of everything so password and notes you have access to all that you can import images as well I'm telling you, if you're looking for a good note-taking app, GoodNote definitely is a good recommendation. It's also in the name, so it's worthy of the name GoodNotes. If you're bored, you can also use this as a scribble and take some sketches. And if you like to, you can use this as a note sketchbook as well, although there's better applications as well. Like Procreate, that would be one that I would personally recommend. It has all the necessary tools that you ever need if you're looking to do animation or just create some very awesome art style images. I have it, I use it time to time, but it's not an application that I personally use all the time because I'm not a creative artist, but I do occasionally when I'm really bored, go in here and try to see if I could sketch something up. Now, the second app that I do use, however, I like taking a lot of photos with my Sony camera, my SLR, and when I'm in a hurry, or even an iPhone photo that I took on my iPhone, I could just import it to my iPad and the software of choice I like using to edit these type of photos is Lightroom. Now the Lightroom subscription is reasonably priced. You get a Photoshop bundle with Photoshop and Lightroom. It's a part of the Creative Cloud program that Adobe has. It's literally $10 a month and it's really worth it, especially if you're a content creator. It has all the necessary tools you need to create thumbnails and stuff like that. But besides me getting sidetracked, this description will allow you to have access to even on mobile devices. So it's that same login. You have access to it on your iPhone, but I personally prefer using it on my iPad, especially when I'm in a hurry. You have all the necessary tools that you'll find on the computer version onto the iPad on a mobile UI friendly layout. And you can get some really cool edits that you just wanna quickly post on social media like Instagram and stuff like that for when it comes to editing on the go. Lightroom is my choice. Uh, sometimes I do use Photoshop. Photoshop to me, it, this is a personal preference. I prefer using Photoshop on the computer, but Lightroom is really good on the iPad. Now, if you wanna add some BAMP to a photo, maybe a lens flare, Lens Flare is the name of this next application. It's a one-time purchase, but the Lens Flare effects that this thing can provide will save you several minutes if you, instead of using Photoshop as everything is already preloaded and it edits everything correctly. So if you wanna add a nice Lens Flare cinematic effect to your images that you wanna share on social media, again, a quick editing tool that I like to use is Lens Flare and this is the app right here. It literally will reflect everything based off the image that you're showing it on. So it gives it that natural feeling. And I think lens flares just add a nice personal taste. And their selections that they have here, they have a lot of different styles to choose from and everything is fully customizable. It's just it takes longer if you're trying to get it to the exact point that you're imagining in your mind, but you can't achieve it. Just again, it takes a while. But this is another great, fantastic editing tool that definitely does allow you to spice things up. Now the next app that I can't live without is called Grammarly. I have it on my iPhone and also my iPad. This thing 
it's a plug-in for the keyboard. It's extraordinarily useful, especially if you're the type of person like me who prefers having like a second person go through your sentences or paragraphs to see if there's any misspelling or corrections. Grammarly does takes care of this all automatically. You simply just tap the little green icon once you're done typing in something and it'll automatically either suggest different words to use, but also catch the small minor mistakes that you might have missed. Now, this is the free version. There is a subscription version. Uh, I'm able to get away with just the free version. I really don't see a need to actually pay for the subscription version unless you are in a marketing business. This is a great, powerful tool, especially if you send a lot of professional emails as well. Now you combine Grammarly with other document style applications. Whenever I have to write a paragraph or a document on a piece of paper, the application of choice that I personally use is Google Google Docs. It's just available all over the place. It easily took over Microsoft Word. I really don't see a need to use Microsoft Word anymore. Even businesses nowadays use Google Docs. So for a free to use document writing app, Google Docs definitely wins hands down. No need to pay for a monthly subscription or anything like that. And it's compatible and supported by many other people nowadays. Now, a VPN. The VPN of choice that I personally use is Surfshark. And not just because I'm affiliated with them, I've been using them before we were in contact. The reason why I choose Surfshark compared to other VPN providers out there is because with Surfshark, the thing that first sold me is the fact that you can you sign in on unlimited devices, which means one single membership isn't strict on the limited amount of devices. You can sign in to more than just five. NordVPN is a fine example. They are limited. But with Surfshark, you can have it assigned in to gaming consoles, all your computers and cell phones that you own and such, even tablets. So you don't have to worry about the limitation or anything like that. And the monthly subscription is the same cause of all the other VPN providers. Well, and I use other VPNs in the past too. And uh, honestly, in terms of overall performance, I don't really notice a difference. They will all perform exactly the same as long as it's a legitimate VPN like Surfshark. So, so if you're wondering what kind of VPN that I've been using for the longest time, it's Surfshark. And since I do have an affiliate partner with them, I also have a discount code to my viewers. So if you're interested in signing up, that'll be linked in the description for you. Now, Call of Duty is the pastime game of choice that I like playing on my iPad, especially if you have a very powerful iPad like the latest generation iPads Pro. Loading time is fantastic. The graphics look phenomenal. And it's especially fun when you pair it with a actual gaming controller, like a PlayStation 5 controller, Xbox, or a PlayStation 4, it doesn't really matter. The iPad are all compatible on all the latest generation full console controllers and you can play wireless. So when you combo this with those controllers, uh, you will easily dominate the competition. And <laughs> it's just so much fun. Now the next application, this is a personal preference. You can use Spotify, Apple Music. I personally use YouTube Music. So in other words, whenever you have downtime, you just wanna to listen to music while you're working or studying or just leave your uh, iPad in a room in a corner somewhere playing music, you should definitely install or have a streaming music provider of choice. Now I personally use YouTube Music reason being because I noticed was YouTube music independent creators will typically just upload their music on YouTube and if it's available on YouTube you could install it on the YouTube music app and view and listen to it on your playlist on the go and as an added bonus they also have a discount where if you bundle YouTube premium with YouTube music you get a nice discount and this allows you to download your YouTube videos offline as well as eliminate ads so for the best listening and viewing YouTube experience, the YouTube music slash premium is a good value in my opinion. Now when I'm bored and I have extra money from my paycheck, I started doing this like a year ago and I just been buying stocks. And if you're looking for a friendly app that gives you all the necessary data there is to know, it's a lot better than Robinhood. I tried Robinhood in the past, I still have them, but I always go back to using Weeble. Weeble is the app choice that I personally use in terms of buying stocks, buying shares, and just recently they allowed it so now you can actually buy cryptocurrency as well, like Dogcoin. I bought a couple of those. Uh, unfortunately, I lost a lot, but I'm gonna hold because you never know. Bitcoin was on that similar roller coaster, and now look at them. And on the iPad, you have a lot more tools than you will ever need, to be honest. I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with Weeble though by now. I've seen a lot of YouTubers in the past push it out. I'm personally just recommending them based off my experience. So far the experience trading with Weeble has been positive and they always throw in free money too. So if you sign up right now, if you're interested, if you open a Weeble brokerage account, you'll get one free stock with the valuation anywhere between three to $300. And if you make an additional 
deposit of any amount, you will actually receive one free stock value between eight to $2,000. So that's a cool little promotion that's going on right now. That's, even when you sign up, they always give you free money. These are real stocks and they could go up in the near future, which they are expected to, especially with this current economy. So if you're looking for a stock brokerage app, Webull is the one that I recommend and I have been having a good experience with them. Not Robinhood, which I do have, but notice I'm not referring them, even though they also give you a referrals bonus, but they've done sketchy stuff in the past and I don't trust them. Now, if you're a homeowner, you'll definitely like to know about this next application. This is called iScape. It's a landscaping app that allows you to actually personalize and visualize how your garden could look like. Now, if you have an iPad that's equipped with an IR sensor or an iPhone as well, you can use this app on the iPhone. This app allows you to basically visionize everything in AR form. So when you get the right trees and stuff like that, you have an understanding how your garden will look like. And so far, this application has a lot of positive reviews and I'm starting to use it now too. So if you're looking for a powerful tool that allows you to actually prepare ahead of time before you start buying plants and fences and stuff like that, I definitely would recommend checking out this app and it's free to download too. Oh no, there you guys have it. That is the uh, 10 essential apps that I use day to day on my iPad Pro. Links to all these apps, of course, will be all linked in the video description down below. So they are literally a click away. And if you got some good useful information out of the video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could actually leave this video a like, as well as give subscribe, especially if you enjoy a lot of tech videos just like this. And also feel free to share this video with a friend or somebody who just recently picked up their iPad and just want to know how to get started because these are the essential apps that I use day to day. And I'm sure everyone can benefit off of them. If you'd like to see more videos, maybe you're curious about that white keyboard on my iPad, you can go ahead and check out that video over there as I go ahead and test the durability to see if that white color will stain. I poured chips on it, spilled drinks on it, and it's really resistant. And in that video next to that one, that is a list of free apps for the iPad, in case you're curious. Thanks so much for watching, take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.